I can give you more light if you, if you need it. It's zero at the moment. It smells so good in here. Is that a little copycat or something? So my, my room is like... <laughs> <laughs> I think you can set it up so this is a sequencer as well within it. Mm -hmm. This is what I made person pitch on. Yeah, we were rehearsed in here for... It was really convoluted. Two days, we two days rehearsed. We had to all the different samplers and then sync it all up. It worked! It did work. It's kind of a miracle, but... Yeah. You seem to have the, the Grim Reaper theme for quite a while, mm -hmm. like before you were doing the record. Yeah. Uh, what does that whole Grim Reaper concept mean to you? Uh, there's a couple dub records that I know where it's one sort of producer or performer meets another one, and that's how they titled it with that meets. And I just always thought that was a, just a cool sounding thing. Kind of reminded me of a comic book in a way that I liked. Um, and then gradually I sort of understood it in terms of an identity changing from one one thing to the next, or a part of you dying and a part of you being born at the same time. But there's actually no building behind this. That's fucked. Today was the last day of its life. And you prefer to take a really long period of time to make something? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I, just I remember see. initially I was like, we'll just bang it out in two weeks in November and then we'll have two weeks in January and then we'll have two weeks to mix and then it's done. It was probably took us around ten times that amount of time, I would say. <laughs> the Goldilocks zone is, it's, it's sometimes it's a, it's a long journey I find, but ultimately once you're, once you're there it's forever. Do you see that? Hang the 49. <laughs> I think it's still there, kind of in the like the more chorusy parts in the background. That's pretty sweet. You go into something with 20 or 25 or things that you're planning on, and then by the end, you can only see maybe a, a quarter of that on the other end. There's certainly a place for me where I start kind of I lose the objectivity about something. If it, if it carries on too long, I kind of get tired of it, or I can't, I forget what I thought was good about it in the first place. Mm -hmm. But yes, yeah, some, there's some points where definitely getting away from something for a week is way better than being on top of it for that week. You know, what you'll do after a week off is you can sort of jump a stage somehow. When we, we use the marimba and then put it through the uh, granular shifter and it just created this awesome weird sounds didn't sound anything like what it came from. Percussion, vocals, vocoder, synths, weird. Piano, and bass. If you got super buck, every second one that you got would spit out two. Do they have good isolation? <laughs> it was a super sweet spot to work. It's an awesome spot. I would just get on the stool. I suppose we should uh, roll on, shouldn't we?
general, I feel like my vision, as far as looking towards the future, only ever goes about a year in advance. Um, and it's always sort of just a big empty space beyond that. And that empty space is frightening to me, or concerns me, I guess. I guess it's like kind of a mild fear of what what's going to happen in the future. It seems like things are kind of doomed, but I guess I don't really see that as an entirely negative thing. Um, with all respect to the human beings on the earth, just kind of, I guess it kind of seems like things have their time, and maybe ours is coming to a close. Who's the Grim Reaper? Traditionally, he's the. He or she is the representation of death, right? For the songs, at least, it was more just like a an agent of change more than anything else. It was never like a real dark sort of heavy thing. Kind of a positive thing, at least as far as it um, deals with stuff on the on the record. It's more curiosity, I guess, than like a morbid obsession with it. So it's not so like taboo, I guess. I mean, it's not like always a super awesome thing, but it happens to everything. I mean, it's sort of weird to say I'm looking forward to it, but in a way, I just want to see what happens. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Very nice. Frames you can have in those, uh, Keep you dead at night. Keep you dead at night. I'll keep you so dead at night. <laughs> no. No, no. It's like, well, where does it actually, where does the other song stop and where does this one start? Mm -hmm. How do we... For this, this album, all the songs that were done for this and the EP and all the other sort of outliers were all done in a very similar fashion in that the, the instrumental stuff, the samples and the drum patterns and the sequences and stuff like that were all done first. Uh, like I spent a lot of time listening to, like I, I'd listen to something for like half a day, just kind of playing through, and every time I think like this could be improved, I'd work on that. Like maybe just like the kick, the kick needed to be sculpted in some way, it sounded kind of floppy or something like that. So just sort of like gradually tweaking the thing, and somehow during that process, listening to the thing over and over again, the m melody or w how the, the vocals should fit into it kind of comes into focus. It feels very much like that. It's sort of fuzzy at first. The broad strokes are, come pretty quickly, but refining that, the melody and sort of how the rhythm of the words should go takes me a while. And the words are always the last thing because I'll sort of craft the melody or the singing part without words, but with uh, very specific rhythms to it. That side of the music is definitely more on the feeling side of things. Um, I feel like I've tried to be less uh, explicit with stuff on this one on these songs and try to take it away from something that's uniquely mine and trying to make it more of a common um, addressing more common concerns. 
where I feel like a lot of the, the words are so vague and kind of an image where you take out, if it's pixels, if you took out, you know, 80% of the pixels and then you're sort of left with this image that is just sort of fragments of what the whole, the whole picture actually yeah. looks like. Um, and I guess it's, it, the hope is that other people flesh out the image for themselves. It's the, like the more general part of the experience. But our brains are doing that anyways, right? With images and with sounds, they're like interpolating stuff. And I guess I hope that- Trying to keep us alive. With lyrics, it does, it does something similar happens. Um, but also, for example, with the tomboy words, I felt they meant one thing to me when I'm, when we finished the album, and now when I listen to it, it comes across as something very different to me. I wanted to do something that didn't feel like I was just talking about myself the whole time. So although everything that happens in the songs is inspired by something that I thought about or experienced, I feel like I worked to um, shape the words so that I didn't feel like I was speaking about myself. To generalize the relatability, as it were? Yeah, or just sort of like up tweak, the tweak the experiences and the, and the, I guess, the messages you could say in a way that felt like it belonged to other people. Is the recording stopping? Or it's just making noise? Uh, it's half five, so that's 1730. I'd say there's a wave, actually. It's always uh, something that happens. It's almost like a rewiring of the brain that happens immediately and temporarily. It's like uh, the kind of thing when you're really focused on something or really working hard at something and you lose track of time or you forget to eat. It's that sort of sensation where you're something something about you kind of goes into autopilot and another another part of your consciousness sort of revs up and when music does that that's the kind of stuff that i really really uh seem to get into i think i think trans transportive is a word and that would that describes a lot of the music that is exciting to me and it's the kind of stuff that I try to make. It's kind of good not to be to totally know what you're doing because you know there's going to be those moments where you kind of got to shoot from the hip and if you're sort of locked into a very specific way of doing things maybe you're not as flexible. Sometimes you can make a mistake and deal with it in a way that not only sort of erases the mistake, but also kind of creates some sort of fresh new thing or kind of new movement or almost like a little explosion or something like that. <laughs> 